Cheryl. Those girls were watching a scene from a horror film called Evil Dead One, which broke all financial records in the cinema and as a home video when released four years ago. Yet it was uh, attacked by some as being no more than a video nasty, and the Department of uh, Public Prosecutions took court action to ban it. The action actually failed, but the arguments will rage again when its sequel, Evil Dead Two, hits the cinema screens next week. Its American director, Sam Raimi, is with us tonight, and we're also joined by Gerald Howarth, who would like to see films like that banned. Sam, let me just ask you first of all as to why it's important to show people being dismembered. There was actually a scene in Evil Dead 1, I don't know whether any of our audience has seen it at all, but uh, of a woman being raped by, of all things, a tree. Now, how, how necessary is it to have those kind of scenes in horror films today? Well, I don't think it's necessary specifically to have uh, any particular type of scene in a horror picture. There is a particular uh, sequence in the woods with a woman where the trees come to life and she is attacked by them it's true and she uh, was raped by them by the looks of things well you don't really see anything so it's really up to the imagination of the viewer um, it was I actually watched the film today I was told to watch it today it was pretty clear to me what was going on well um, okay um, well it's uh, there was a scene in the, the picture that did have a sequence of woman in the woods and her clothes were certainly torn off and um, it was a fantasy, and I don't think that I personally would repeat that sequence again had I the chance to rewrite the picture, but I wrote it when I was uh, 18 years old. Where, where on earth did you get the inspiration from at that age to do that kind of thing? Um, to, to write horror pictures yeah. specifically? Well, I've always enjoyed horror movies, and um, I've always enjoyed a good horror book, Being Scared. I think a lot of people enjoy that, so um, I just decided to give it a shot myself. You, you still seem to have in that film an obsession with, with mutilating the human form. I mean, is that what's necessary these days to bring the thousands of people into the cinemas to watch that kind of movie? Um, actually, it's, Evil Dead is a story of uh, demonic spirits, uh, and it's really a battle of man versus monster. And it's the monsters that are attacked and destroyed and dispatched in the Evil Dead pictures. Let, let me bring in Gerald Howarth. We'll talk about the fact that you tried to get a private member's bill through to, to stop that kind of thing being seen on the screen. Is there, is there a place, do you think, anywhere in British cinema for films like Evil Dead 1 or 2? Well, uh, Mr. Ramey says that it's a film that was uh, designed to show um, the goodies getting at the, uh, the evil chaps. I think that's um, actually uh, really rather a load of, of uh, whitewash. I don't think it was at all. I think it was... Uh, 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 an, an attempt at gratuitous violence. I hadn't had a look at all its film, but I have seen some of it, and I've certainly seen an extract from uh, Evil Dead 2, I think it's called. And it strikes me as the, the, uh, um, the rather true-to-life uh, pictures of people vomiting blood and blood all over their face and their, their bodies mutilated. Uh, I don't think actually is the kind of thing that certainly would be shown on video. I think in, in the cinema, it's a different thing. If adults want to go and see a film which has been passed by the BBFC, uh, and classified as 18, where there is some, some say on who actually goes in to see the films in, in terms of age. That's one thing. But these things are then become available on video, and they are available in the home. Now, the audience here, when they saw the, the films tonight, uh, the extracts, they all, they all tittered. Um, and I quite understand, because it's, uh, it's absurd. But when you see it quietly, in the confines as I did earlier tonight, just myself watching it, and some of the, the gruesome, grotesque, and gratuitous violence, simply for the sake of showing violence. When you see that, not only did it make me feel sick, but also it quite clearly is working away at people's sensitivities. Uh, the more you shock people, the more it takes to shock them. And that's what we're doing, and in videos, you have no control over who sees videos. Television has a watershed, the cinema has a has, has a, a sort of filter at the gates so that people under the given age don't get in, whereas videos are seen at home. And, and irresponsible parents, no parents should be responsible, but irresponsible parents leaving these videos lying around for their kids to watch. There's no, there, there is a lot of evidence that this causes direct 
damage and harm. Uh, let me children. find out if, if anybody's actually seen any of the Evil Dead films in the audience, have they? Anyone at all? Yeah, let, let me just tell you something. We've got a slight problem. Um, Yuri Geller, Geller strikes again, I think, because it, not only did our telephones pack in, but in fact, our, our VT cutting panel upstairs, which means we can only come to certain cameras. So if you're talking in the audience, we can't actually see you, but you're very welcome to chip in at any stage if you'd like to. <laughs> Can, can you just tell us what you actually thought of the film? I thought it was excellent. I thought it was possibly the best horror picture I've ever seen. Um, I think you've got to, when you go to see a horror picture, you're not necessarily going to see entertainment, inverted commas. You're, you're, buying, a, you're buying a ticket, if you like, for, for an endurance test. I mean, it's like getting on a roller coaster. You, you don't particularly want to go round faster and from faster in circles getting nowhere being scared but you like being scared so you go into the into the picture and you you, you like to be scared I'll that's tell you what, what i'm going about. to do actually we've only got this camera left so if i come over and actually stand quite close did you want to say something sir yes Andy, i do look um there's been a lot of talk about trees attacking people <coughs> I, I don't think there's rape in that scene i've seen the movie but i, I don't remember 1939 people sitting well it wasn't television but screaming on radio look the trees came alive and threatened dorothy judy garland no less <laughs> people are losing their sense of humor these are horror comics they're not meant to be taken seriously i'd be a lot more worried if my kids when they were young saw news at six o'clock which had bloody violence in the streets of belfast because how can they tell that's just a movie it isn't just a movie it's real life people are just taking this a little too seriously a little too pompously okay let, let me bring in another gentleman on the front row if we can come over here again we've got the only one camera uh, Jamie Bogle is from the National Viewers and Listeners Association now are we taking this far too seriously well I think if I may just say so about um, Sam Raimi's film I think it probably has all the charm and sophistication of a speech by Joseph Goebbels and about the same sort of <laughs> same sort of social usefulness I mean the thing that you've got to bear in mind is that the scenes that we saw tonight are only small excerpts from the film you haven't actually seen the very worst of it by any means the, it's, you know, a great deal worse than that. It's, it, and to watch it, as Gerald Howarth said, uh, non-stop for some length of time, it certainly does have a, a, an effect on, on one, I think, and uh, this is the thing that we're concerned about. I mean, that's, it, it's an inescapable fact that uh, the media of any sort, and particularly video... Is, is there go, any evidence at all that these films well, actually I was just going to come to, actually. Course, huh? There is a great deal of evidence. I mean, I think that the greatest evidence of all, as far as the media is concerned, is the fact that television and uh, other forms of media must be having an effect on our behaviour, otherwise advertisers, for example, will not pay such vast sums of money in order to advertise on them. So I don't think there's any doubt in, in, in anybody's mind, if you really come down to it, but the fact that, that all forms of media do influence us in some way. Now, obviously, they don't influence, influence us to a certain degree, but if you live on this sort of thing, you have a diet of it, it becomes addictive, it does start to affect your behaviour. And there is no doubt that this well, has well, happened. Well, sitting next to you is, is a great fan of uh, horror movies. Are you, are you addicted to them, and has it affected your behaviour? You've got a... You've got a an alien's badge on, I see there, and, <laughs> and a, 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 yeah, a I've dead been, t shirt as well. I've been watching uh, horror films for many, many years now, just purely out of interest to start with, and gradually I, I discovered that the more I watched, the interest was actually in the effects. The people wanted to see, you know, what kind of monsters would appear in each sufficient movie. Um, I think the problem is that the the rating system, which was brought up earlier for films that you, you can go to in the cinema, sit down because we've got the cameras back um, now. is uh, is already extended to videos, so that you can go into a shop, and every video now has an 18 certificate if it's either a horror or a sex movie. So I don't think that the same uh, arguments that we shouldn't have videos available like this should be raised. It is up to the retailers who are selling the videos to forbid children under the age of 18 from taking these videos home. Yeah, but I mean, the trouble with that is, you see, that if it doesn't matter what age a person is that they go and buy these videos, they are going to be then out of the shop, in which case they're then going to get to the hands of children. It is an inescapable fact. You are going to have that happen. What are you going to do about it? Ger let's ask Gerald Howarth. I mean, what, what can be done to actually <coughs> stop these things getting into the hands of youngsters who might be uh, influenced by them? Well, I, I do think there's a very difficult question that we all have to address ourselves to here, which is the, uh, the, the freedom of our friend here, go and... Uh, watch what he regards as being uh, uh, the equivalent of a relicate. So I quite understand. And, and uh, to a certain extent, I, I would agree with him. But what I don't think anybody who has really looked at this issue seriously has addressed themselves to is the free availability uh, of the video cassette and its intrusion into the home. And uh, as I s we saw those girls uh, um, screaming at that, uh, at that sudden horror bit and they were all sort of falling over themselves but they were all together they were sort of taking comfort with one another and that's what you do in the cinema I remember seeing uh, the the, uh, the godfather and the, the horse in the in the bed scene and you know I clutched my girlfriend and my and my best friend on the other side um, but I mean when you're sitting in your own drawing room it's it's a different story and we do have to address ourselves I'm afraid 
uh, to this difficult question of having the, the, uh, these things freely available to children. And I know it sounds a bit nanny statish. I quite accept that. But on the other hand, there is, uh, I think, a general view, not just amongst uh, the, the general public, but also some of the experts, uh, that um, uh, an endless diet of, of violence on the box, on the, uh, on the video, is going to have an impact on the children. I mean, at the Toxteth riots, for example, uh, Lord Scarman uh, said in his report that uh, copycat violence was a factor. And I think that, uh, that, that, that every realistic person does accept this. And, and I, I rather pose more questions do, do than, I, than, I, than I present solutions. Do you accept solutions? from Sam Raimi's point of view that this is really just fantasy in a lot of cases? I mean, what, what's, what's the new film like? The new picture is uh, a horror movie also. Of course, it's a continuation of the first Evil Dead, a story of uh, demonic spirits that are raised from the ancient Sumerian Book of the Dead, and uh, it's uh, pretty much a ghost and uh, monster picture. Yeah, but that yeah, blood is pretty lifelike. When you see that blood spurting out of yeah, their mouths, but you're, you're it's not. It's you're not the, you, know, you don't see the. You don't see the, the old uh, um, the sort of Hammer movie scene rocking in the background because it's a it's a rather sort of cheap production. I mean, it's all very lifelike, and I think that is a problem. I mean, Sam Raimi himself says uh, that uh, he, he, that he can't say, he can't take a diet of uh, he, he does of say blood he's getting a bit longer. fed up with it, didn't you? Actually, say so you're going to be fed up with making these with with blood. It's having an effect on him. Of, no, I. Uh, <laughs> The age of 18, perhaps. <laughs> I wouldn't uh, say that uh, I'm through making horror pictures, just that I, I don't think that I'd put that particular sequence of the woman in the woods because um, I didn't enjoy that particular. particular would you let your kids it. watch any, any, anything at all like this? Have you, have you got any children? I would rather that they watched horror movies. I'd rather that they, had, they lived in a uh, free society where they have the ability to watch those horror movies rather than in well, a than society. The Flintstones, I think. Well, rather than in a society where censorship or a group of people is determining for me what I can and cannot show my children. Well, um, can I just make a point there? I mean, this old hoary thing of censorship is absolute nonsense. Censorship is going on all the time, and it's going on in this studio. I mean, for instance, if you take that microphone away from me, nobody will be able to hear a thing I say. That is the kind of censorship that is going to happen, whatever Sam Raimi does. But the point is, we're not talking about censorship. We're simply talking about standards in the media and how the media affects behavior and the level of social violence and there is no doubt that it does affect the level of there social violence. There is a violence. doubt. There is no... Yeah. And there's no doubt at all. I'm what but study do you base that on, There sorry? are at least seven or eight hundred different pieces of, 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 of independent evidence upon which to base that. But the most common sense thing is what I said before. Name one. Advertisers would not spend money, the vast sums that they do on television, if it didn't influence people's behavior. A continual diet of anything media or whatever it is, is going to affect people's behavior. There is no doubt about it. Yeah, but is the there one example? The police recently had a press conference in Brixton, and they said, and I quote, that now knives are used 22 times a week in Brixton, and they, they said that they are trying to right. mount a campaign to de-glamorize, de-glamorize, their own word, the use of knives, because now the, the types of knives that are used are not just sort of uh, Boy Scout knives, but butchers' knives, okay. and all the rest of that I sort mean, of thing. Which are, you, are, you, are you saying that the likes of Sam Raimi? Are you, are you saying that the likes of Sam Raimi is responsible for this directly? I think that uh, those the sorts of films that he makes have a very considerable contribution towards that situation. Yes, and I, and I think therefore they're, that they are irresponsible films. And with all due respect to Sam Ra Raimi, I think he's being extremely irresponsible in making that sort of a film. And and and, and it is behoves us really uh, to do something about well, it. Let, let's let Sam respond to that. Well, it's possible. I, I do agree with you that uh, films can influence people. 